Greetings. Today is Monday, September 23, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will be providing an update on what is now potential tropical cyclone number 9 of the season, which is close to becoming tropical storm Helene as it moves northwest. It will pass very near the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba, possibly as a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. In the medium and long term, this future cyclone threatens to reach the states of Florida and Georgia as a powerful major hurricane, with some models even projecting it could reach Category 4 or 5 when approaching Florida's Big Bend area. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that residents of western Cuba, northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, and the states of Florida, Georgia, Alabama and South Carolina closely monitor the evolution of this future cyclone, as it is anticipated to be a large system that could cause a disaster in the southeastern United States. In the visible satellite image, we can see how the circulation related to the potential tropical cyclone continues to show signs of organization. A Hurricane Hunter aircraft investigated the area and found that it is close to becoming a tropical storm. If we look at the infrared satellite animation, we can see how the thunderstorm area continues to increase near the center of circulation, and it is very likely that tonight it will be classified as either a tropical depression or tropical storm Helene. The specialized track models continue to project a northwestward movement over the next 48 hours, and by Wednesday afternoon, it should be passing between the Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba, bringing some tropical storm conditions, and then moving north-northeastward to eventually reach Florida's Panhandle or Big Bend. It is very important to note that the circulation of this system will be quite broad when it is located just west of the Florida Peninsula, so it is crucial for residents of the western Florida Peninsula to stay alert to its development, as any shift to the right in the track could bring tropical storm or hurricane conditions to Florida's west coast. Unfortunately, this future tropical cyclone will be passing through areas with extremely warm sea surface temperatures, which should help it strengthen rapidly as it approaches the southeastern United States. For example, see the latest projections from the specialized models. The consensus is that it will arrive as a Category 3 hurricane, including the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. However, note that some models project it could arrive as a Category 4 or even Category 5 hurricane. Nevertheless, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center currently projects it will arrive on Thursday afternoon with maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour, that is, a Category 3 hurricane. But the National Hurricane Center also mentions that this forecast could change, and it is possible it could arrive a bit stronger. Everything will depend on what happens in the coming days as it approaches the United States. Also, note that in the 5 p.m. bulletin, a tropical storm warning has been issued for northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, including Cancun and a tropical storm warning has also been issued for western Cuba. This is also accompanied by a hurricane watch. I urge residents of this area to begin preparing for a hurricane, as weather conditions will start to deteriorate beginning tomorrow, Tuesday. The system should pass at its closest point around noon on Wednesday, and then begin moving closer to Florida, arriving Thursday afternoon. Additionally, note that within the cone of uncertainty is the city of Tampa. Essentially, from Tampa to Florida's panhandle, Everyone should closely monitor the system's progress as the future tropical storm Helene circulation crosses near Pinar del Rio and northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. Some tropical storm force winds could affect these areas, including Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Pinar del Rio, and parts of Havana. At this time, we are expecting wind gusts between 70 to 80 km per hour, but this could worsen if the system strengthens faster than expected. Besides the wind, See that rainfall accumulations between 200 to 300 millimeters are projected for western Cuba and northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. It's possible some flooding could occur from tomorrow, Tuesday through Thursday. Now let's look at the latest runs of the global models. Starting with the American GFS model, its run this afternoon shows a Category 1 hurricane crossing between western Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula by Wednesday afternoon, then maintaining its track north-northeast. In this run, it has a Category 3 hurricane entering over Florida's Big Bend on Thursday night. However, this model has been somewhat inconsistent, as in today's noon run, it had a slightly more powerful hurricane, possibly a Category 4. Additionally, see that the projected track in the GFS model closely resembles the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. If this forecast holds, tropical storm force winds could affect much of the Florida Peninsula. Tropical storm force winds are shown in orange and reddish colors, while hurricane force winds are projected in pink colors. If the official forecast holds, hurricane force winds will be felt across northern Florida, while the Florida Peninsula and parts of the Panhandle would experience tropical storm force winds. Also, as the system moves into Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, tropical storm force winds could be registered from Thursday to Friday of this week. In terms of rain, models are projecting rainfall accumulations of 3 to 7 inches for northern Florida, and similarly for southern and central Georgia and parts of northern Alabama and South Carolina.
Finally, let's look at the European model, which is quite similar to the American model, but in this case, it shows a Category 1 or 2 hurricane entering over Florida's Big Bend. However, it's likely that the European model is underestimating the intensity with which this future hurricane could arrive. Remember that forecasts are subject to change. For example, some runs of the German model show a track slightly more to the right, which could put areas near Tampa at greater risk. And while this is a possibility, today's consensus is that it will enter somewhere between Florida's Big Bend and Panhandle. However, it is always important for the rest of Florida to stay alert to the system's evolution in case there are changes in the track forecast. The ensemble members of the European model also agree that the direct impact location is likely over Florida's Big Bend. Another important factor to watch closely is the conditions, which will be favorable for rapid intensification over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. In fact, some of the specialized intensity models show it could arrive as a powerful Category 4 or even Category 5 hurricane when approaching Florida. This is a possibility we cannot rule out at this time, and for this reason everyone in Florida should stay very alert to the system's evolution and start reviewing their emergency plans. Well, that's all for this forecast update. The next video will be recorded tomorrow morning, so I invite you to subscribe to my channel, click the bell to get notifications when I upload new videos. I hope you all have an excellent night. The next video will discuss the imminent impact of what is now Hurricane John approaching sectors of Oaxaca and Guerrero. Goodbye.